Hello denizens of YouTube, and welcome back to Nine Hours, Nine Persons, Nine Doors. When we last left off, we had finally met our captor Zero, or at least his disembodied voice. And in today's episode, the nine of us are tasked with keeping our collective shit together long enough to hopefully find an avenue of escape from this sinking ship. An optimistic goal, but hey, let's see what happens. Hey! You bastard! What do you mean by that? Come out here, you asshole! Ugh, that guy won't stop shouting. And the others. Ugh. <sighs> hmm. <sighs> Whew. Junpei, too, was consumed by his thoughts. Junpei, you can't let those thoughts consume you, man. You gotta stay strong. Akane's gonna catch on quick if you're out here simping. Uh, I have way too many questions. Who is Zero? What's the nonary game? What's it for? Is he some nutjob just doing this to mess with us? Or does he have some other purpose? Why pick me to be part of this insane game? And the others? Why are these eight people here? And the most confusing of them all. Why is Akane here? I haven't seen her since elementary school. Why her? Why now? Coincidence? No. There's no way. There has to be a reason. I don't know what exactly, but there has to be. Very well. The lion's voice seemed oddly loud in the silence. Standing around here won't do us any good. Best we get moving, don't you think? Get moving? Are you planning to open the numbered doors? Hey, wait! But don't tell me you're actually gonna do what this... the Zero says. No, no, that's not what I mean. The lion shook his head, mildly annoyed. I'm saying let's find another way. After all, we haven't really examined this place yet. We... what? Where have we not looked? Everyone searched A-Deck already, right? Yeah, we were kind of in a rush, though, so we probably missed some things. Why don't we check out the lower floors first? We should see how deep this place goes. I can work with that. Then let's go. Submerged. Damn. If the water level keeps rising like this, we're all gonna drown. No, I don't believe that's something we have to worry about. The prince knelt down and gently drew his hand across it. See? The water's not flowing. That means the origin of the water has been stopped. Perhaps this Zero fellow has used some sort of remote control to seal a watertight door lower down. He said that our time limit was nine hours. In other words, this water won't rise for nine hours. Then you're saying we won't sink till then. Well, that may be a little too optimistic. No point to wishful thinking. <sighs> That's depressing. If we don't determine a way to advance from this point, we are stuck on A deck and C deck. Looks that way. Hey, hold on. How about we check C-Deck before we jump to any conclusions? We might find something there. Huh, you're right. I think we should look at the metal doors by the big staircase, too. They're pretty suspicious. No numbers on either door. And I don't see an authentication device, either. Nope. It's locked. This one, too. Damn, none of the doors are opening. 
Hey guys, over here. There's another door behind the stairs. <sighs> this one doesn't open either. We'll see about that. Hey, old man. Give me a hand. Using force, I see. Let's give it a try. <laughs> It won't budge. Could you not just start shouting out of nowhere? You almost gave me a heart attack, you know. Oh, sorry. It doesn't appear to have moved even with two of us trying. It's very well made. Idiots. Try using your brain first. Huh? Take a closer look. A keyhole? Right. It's obvious what we need to open this door. <clears throat> A key, huh? You got a problem? No, I just really doubt we'll find a key that easily. <sighs> Ignoring the tense air between the two, Junpei moved closer to examine the doorknob. What's this? Just above it was a strange mark in the shape of a circle surrounding a dot. There's a mark on it. D does it mean something? Hey, look! Over here, too! Hmm? Pink hair was looking at the double doors they hadn't examined yet. Yeah, we're gonna have to come up with a better nickname for her than Pink Hair. Things are tense enough on the ship already without people going around joking about whether or not the carpet matches the drapes. More doors. I think they're elevators. There's an inverted triangle button by them. May as well try pressing it. Huh. Nothing. Maybe the power is on. Or we need to do something with this card reader. And there's a strange mark here, too. What is this? It looks like a lowercase h with a dash drawn across the upper stem of the h. Junpei stared at it for a while. This is the symbol of Saturn. It's an astrological symbol. Then, the mark on the other door... I think that was the Sun symbol. We saw the same symbols on A deck. You did? I don't remember that. A deck, huh? huh? I haven't been there, so I wouldn't know. We may as well check again since we're talking about it. Lion's words urged them on, and they took the stairs up. There! The two doors next to the stairs. The one on the left had a keyhole with a similar symbol engraved on it. She's right. It, it looks similar to what we saw downstairs. This is an Earth symbol. The horizontal line symbolizes the equator, and the vertical one represents the prime meridian. I see. Junpei looked up at the ceiling. Hmm. The ceiling. Metal plates. Huh. It's as if it's covering something up. Perhaps it was a dome of some kind. I wish we could get out through there. Be realistic. We'd need a lot of explosives to open that up. The windows too. Huh. They're all covered. There were several windows along both sides of the ship. Or at least there had been. They too were covered with metal plates. Damn, they even bolted the windows shut? The government's really not fucking around with these coronavirus quarantines, are they? <laughs> That's gonna date this video pretty badly, but oh well. In other words... We're trapped. All the exits go nowhere. Junpei was not happy. The girl with pink hair spoke up. Well, I'm sure they go somewhere. We just can't open them. Then the mountain spoke. You don't know that. For all we know, they just open into walls or take us in circles. The only thing leading us in circles is this conversation. 
I get that making the characters look for alternate exits is important to our willing suspension of disbelief, but I think it's pretty apparent, for now at least, that our only means of escape is to play along with Zero's little game and go through one of the numbered doors. The prince did not agree. No. I'm sure they go somewhere. Otherwise, what point would there be? And we can open them. Well, two of them at least. Oh, you mean the numbered doors. All eyes turn toward the doors with numbers on them. The atmosphere in the room grew tense. Hey, wait a minute. I think I said this earlier, but I don't think we should do that. The dancer moved in front of the doors, as if to block them. We'd have to be crazy to open these doors. If we do that, we're doing exactly what Zero wants us to do. Yeah, but Zero has left us no choice but to do it. Saying we shouldn't open the doors at this point is just an indefensible position. We don't have a choice. Suddenly, everyone began to speak at once. May as well give it a shot. Can't stay here forever. Yes, I'm in favor as well. No, I'm totally against this. But shouldn't we at least try? We don't know what will happen. We should stay here. We don't have time for that. In eight and a half hours, this ship is going to sink. The clamor of voices made it next to impossible to determine who was saying what. Their arguments grew more and more intense until people were shouting and screaming at one another. Uh. Hey, shut up! They fell silent and all eyes turned to Junpei. He felt each stare burning into him, but he refused to flinch. Before we try and decide where we're going to go, there's something else we ought to do. What's that? We need to exchange information. We don't know anything about each other. I want to know who you guys are. Who you are, where you came from, why you ended up here. Don't tell me you aren't curious too. They were silent. Some of them looked the other way, or bit their lip, or crossed their arms and stared at the ceiling. But one of them spoke up. It was Akane. I agree. I think Jumpy is right. Jump? Oh, I'm sorry. I'm talking about him. I just call him Jumpy. His name is Junpei. She pointed toward Junpei. We're childhood friends. We went to the same elementary school. Wait, stop! Don't tell us stuff we didn't ask you about. Zero's probably watching us right now. What are you gonna do if he's listening in? I really think that's the least of our concerns. Zero had all the power and resources necessary to bring us here in the first place. Some of us were kidnapped from home, and we've already proven that there are people here who know each other. It seems like a safe bet that he already has plenty of information on us. Playing things close to the chest is hardly a sensible priority when attempting to connect the dots between us could lead us to the culprit. If we're really interested in acting as more than Zero's pawns, it really seems to me that we should do some detective work. It's certainly a more effective plan of attack than just wandering around the place and hoping he forgot to seal one of the doors. Oh, would that be bad? Hell yeah, it would! We don't know how much that bastard knows about us. Maybe he just picked a bunch of random people to kidnap. If that is the case, then it'd be dangerous for us to let him know too much. If Zero knows who we are, he could go after our families. Maybe he'd tell us he had them and get us to do stuff, you know? But we still need to know what our names are. It's going to be hard to talk to each other if we don't have names. Alright, then why don't we have code names? To him, apparently, it seemed like the obvious solution.
code names. Yeah, we'll each pick something. Like, I'll be seven. Seven? Why are you seven? It seemed a fair question. The mountain stuck out his left arm. Because this bracelet number says seven. Get it. Yeah, that's a good idea. All right, I'm gonna be Santa. If you're supposed to be Santa, then I think Mr. Claus's eating disorder swung the other way this year, chicken legs. I mean, no disrespect, but somehow it's just jollier to imagine somebody stuffing their face than starving themselves. Any of you chumps know Japanese? No. Sun means three, so I'll be Santa. You know, like Santa Claus. Fits, don't you think? You clearly weren't listening to me. Then your bracelet number. Yeah, it's got a three on it. Good job, Grandpa. Just like the mountain had done, Silver thrust out his left hand. Sure enough, the face of his bracelet read three. Very well then. I'll go next, shall I? My bracelet number is one. Given that, I think ace seems appropriate. I'll be Lotus then. As I'm sure you all know, it has eight petals. Which means, of course, that my bracelet number is... Eight. I would appreciate it if you would call me Snake. My bracelet number is two. Since Ace has chosen cards, then I choose dice, snake eyes clearly, which is particularly relevant given that I am blind. You can't see? No, Ace, he's metaphorically blind. He can't see why kids love the taste of cinnamon toast. I knew it. <laughs> I didn't expect her to play the straight man to my joke like that. He kept his eyes closed during their entire ordeal, which had suggested something strange, but to hear it said so casually, it was something of a surprise. Everyone seemed a little nervous at the prince's proclamation, but no one seemed to know how to react to it. Me next! There was one person, however, who didn't seem to be surprised in the least. The girl with pink hair. I want to be Clover. You know, like a four-leaf clover. Good luck, right? Looking almost bored, she held out her left hand. The face of her bracelet showed the number four. They'd come around to June. He held out his bracelet. All right, my number's five. So my code name is going to be... Well, I have one. It's not like there's any point to it now. The dancer cut him off in mid-sentence. I mean, we all know your name already. You're Junpei. Oh. Yeah. They all nodded. Kane stepped forward nervously. Uh, then you should all call me by my name, too. Because, I mean, it doesn't seem... It doesn't seem fair to Jumpy. You're thinking it's not cool for you to hide your name after you told us his. What's not cool is all of you getting these fresh ass code names and leaving me with the government name. Tell you what, since I'm number five, how about we take inspiration from the pentagram and call me the goat? If you already know as the protagonist, I'm gonna have to do all the heavy lifting to get us out of here. Junpei decided he had to do something. What's your bracelet number? It's six. She hesitated for a moment, then held out her left hand. As she'd claimed, the bracelet's face showed a six. Junpei looked at it for a moment and thought. All right then, uh, why don't we call you June? June? Yeah, you know, it's the, it's the sixth month of the year. So you're June. 
Jumpy? Akane kneaded her hands and looked up at Junpei, uncertain. He smiled back at her reassuringly. Are you good with that? Uh, yeah. She thought about it for a few more moments, then seemed to come to a decision and gave Junpei a small nod. Okay then. Their names decided, Junpei ran over them quickly in his head. So this is how everyone breaks down. One is Ace. Two is Snake. Three is Santa. Four is Clover. Five is me. Six is June. Seven is Seven. And eight is Lotus. That means eight of us have revealed our bracelet numbers. The only one left is... That glasses guy with hair like a bird's nest. You haven't said a thing so far, have you? His skin was pale, his breathing was heavy, and he was soaked with nervous sweat. <laughs> his behavior seemed very suspicious, or perhaps simply emotionally unstable. It was difficult to tell. Said in the last video that the dude looked like a tweaker, probably just time for his next fix. Whatever the case, it seemed clear that he had only a fingertip's worth of a grip on his sanity. The girl with pink hair, Clover, walked up to him slowly. She put her hands on her hips and eyed him suspiciously. What number are you? Mm. He didn't answer. His bloodshot eyes twitched from person to person and his breath came in hot pants. <laughs> came in hot pants. I mean, Clover does have the cutest design in this game, but I don't think I'd go jizzing in my pants over it. Hey, I'm talking to you. The man licked his chapstick needin' ass lips with a shaking tongue and spoke with a voice like old paper. Isn't it obvious? There are nine people here. And you know who numbers one through eight are. I'm the only one left. So you're nine? Yeah. He extended a trembling arm. The bracelet did indeed say nine. Clover looked at it contemptuously. What's your code name? Code name? What do you want us to call you? We all made up names. You should too. I don't need one. Why not? Because I am not going to stay here with you. He took a shuddering breath and exhaled. Clover looked at him with something very like disgust. You've got some sort of plan? I do. Yeah? What's that? You sure you want to know? Yeah? All right. Let me show you. I'm going to do this! <laughs> By the time they realized what he was doing, it was too late to stop him. Hey! What the hell do you think you're doing? Santa leapt forward, toward Clover and the Ninth Man. He was halfway there when... Stay back! Suddenly the man's hand dove into his pocket. Ah! He held it to Clover's pale, quivering neck. If you get any closer, I'll cut her open! Uh... Yeah, that's right. 
the man's smile was neither friendly nor reassuring. Sweat poured down his neck, soaking the collar of his shirt. Clover, are you all right? The prince, Snake's voice sounded oddly concerned. Yeah, I'm fine. Her voice shook, making her words even less convincing. What the hell are you trying to do? I told you. This is my plan. What are you gonna do to her, you sick son of a bitch? Don't worry. I'm not gonna do anything to her. If she just does what I tell her to, I'll let her go. He started to move backward, slowly, keeping his grip on Clover. <laughs> slowly? That's right. Just follow me. Keeping their distance, Junpei and the others followed. Eventually, the man reached the wall. He gave a start as his back touched it, then glanced around quickly and spoke. Here, verify. <laughs> the left, look on your left. Do you see the device on the wall? Place your hand on the scanner panel, the round part. What if I don't? The man's nostrils flared, and he looked like he was about to choke. Are you an idiot? What do you think? I could slit your throat right now. I'll kill you if I have to. All I need is your bracelet. <laughs> Just do it. Do it now. He pressed the knife hard against Clover's neck. Uh, okay, I'll do it. Slowly, she stretched her left hand out toward the device. Like this? Her back was to it, and she had to feel around for a moment before she found the circular panel. It made a cold, electronic noise, and on the display above her hand, an asterisk appeared. So that's how it works. He called that round part of the device the scanner panel. If we put our left hand on it, our bracelet number gets entered into the device. Then... Should you total the numbers on your numbered bracelets, and find that the digital root of that number is equal to the number of that door, the door will open. Junpei shifted his eyes to the door itself. The number on it was five. Door five. But why does this guy know so much about how this thing works? It's like he knows exactly what to do. Good. Good. You're done. Next. His bloodshot eyes crept from person to person until finally... They stopped on the line. Ace. You, right? You're the one with the number one bracelet, right? Yes. I am. So? Then you're next. Just verify your number like this little brat did. <sighs> what are you doing? Do it! Don't you care what happens to her? Okay, okay, just calm down. Ace held up his hands, palms out. The ninth man jerked his chin toward the device. I'm coming over. Slowly, cautiously, Ace moved toward the device. After what seemed like an agonizing eternity, he reached it. Now, verify. All right, this is what you wanted, right? Ace nodded and placed his hand on the scanner panel. The device beeped again, and a second asterisk appeared. Now the device has both Clover and Ace's numbers, 4 and 1. 4 plus 1 is 5. 
it's the same as the number written on the door. But it won't open yet. Only three to five people can pass through one numbered door. One more person. If what Zero said is true, he needs one more person. Who? Who does he need? Get back! His voice shook, but the knife he held to Clover's throat made his words a command. Ace took two, then three steps back. No! Farther! More than that! Go all the way back! Okay. Slowly, Ace did what he was told. <laughs> the ninth man's lips curled into a cruel, twisted smile. Wait, uh, don't tell me. That was when Junpei understood his plan. Clover's four, and Ace is one. Added to the ninth man's nine, four plus one plus nine is fourteen. And the digital root of fourteen, one plus four, is five. In other words... <laughs> Thank God you were all so cooperative. Now I can get out of this nightmare. He pressed his own hand against the scanner panel. A third asterisk appeared on the screen. He dropped his hand to the lever on the side of the device and pulled. The door opened with a heavy, metallic groan. Good! I don't need you anymore! He let go of Clover. Wait! Junpei leapt toward the ninth man, but he wasn't fast enough. Here! She's all yours! The man shoved Clover. <laughs> and hopped through the door. Okay. Have a good one, guys. I'm going off ahead now. Well then, goodbye. He raised his hand and waved, a twisted smirk on his face. Then he was gone. The door ground shut with a dull clang of metal on metal. Clover, are you all right? Clover's all right, but I'm starting to think Zero's even more fucked up in the head than we were giving him credit for. For as much effort as went into setting up this game, you'd think he'd at least take the time to skim everyone's pockets. A anyone else got any weapons I need to know about? How about some weed? Don't know about you guys, but I could really use some weed. Can I get a show of hands on that? <sighs> no. Nobody. Seven? You look like you smoke. What about you, Snake? Some some kind of glaucoma treatment on you, maybe? Shouldn't have gotten my hopes up. Honestly, I'm sure there's some reason Zero let that guy have a knife. Hell, it probably wasn't on him when he was abducted. Zero probably gave him the thing as part of some mastermind reveal nine hours from now. As contrived as the rest of this setup is, it wouldn't be all that surprising. Snake ran to Clover's side as she lay on the floor. Yeah, I'm fine. She climbed unsteadily to her feet, and once there, leaned heavily on Snake's shoulder for support. Damn it! Junpei ran to the door. That bastard! The others followed him. Several pairs of hands grabbed hold of the handles and pulled. <laughs> Open, damn it! They grunted and strained, but... Shit! It won't budge! That was when Lotus, the dancer, spoke. Her voice was quiet. Do you hear something? Like, what? Like, some sort of... beeping. 
Junpei pressed his ear against the cold metal of the door. The others did the same. You're right. I can hear it too. What is it? Then they heard something else. It was the ninth man. Why is it stopping? God damn it! You... you lied! Lied? This wasn't supposed to happen! This is wrong! This is wrong! Oh, shit. So much for a plan nine hours in the making. More like nine seconds. Well, at least it saves us the trouble of hunting him down later and beating his ass ourselves. His voice shook with fear. Safe on the outside, they stepped back from the door and looked at one another. What is happening in there? Well, Ace, I'm no expert on the matter, but I believe that is the sound of a man being raped by woodland critters. Open the door, please! I'm begging you! Help me! Please get me out of here! Ah, God damn it! Junpei grabbed hold of the device. He slammed his hand on the scanner panel, but... Nothing happened. Why? Why won't it work? Engaged? Is it because it's occupied? Uh, oh my god, oh my god! There's no time left! Listen, I was lied to! He lied to me! He put me in here! It was him! He killed me! Yeah, well, I don't know him. Does anybody here know him? Seriously, dude, be more specific. Fuck. It was him! <laughs> wait, wait, hold on. There, that's better. The explosion rocked the room. Instinctively, they ducked, then stood up slowly when they realized there was no danger. <sighs> no one spoke. Silence filled the room. A beep? All eyes turned toward it. Did that thing just make that sound? Um... The display changed from engaged to vacant. Let's see if we can open it. Seven swallowed hard. Normally I'd make a joke about that, but I have too much respect for Seven. I'm not kidding either. Without going into any spoilers, Seven is a seriously awesome character. Okay. Junpei nodded and placed his hand on the scanner panel. A red asterisk appeared on the LCD display. Well, it registered my bracelet number. But it won't open with one person. We need at least two more people. <laughs> we sure do, Junpei. If only the ninth man had paid as much attention to the rules as you. Hmm. I don't know why, but I always pick uh, Santa and June here. But today, I think I'll go ahead and do something a little different and have Snake and Seven help me. That sounds good. Snake, Seven, you think you could give me a hand here? The pun was a little too on the nose, but the mood was still grim. Oh, right. Lend me a hand. Honestly, I probably wouldn't have even noticed the pun there if the pros hadn't pointed it out for me. But I'm not surprised it doesn't elevate the mood. As much as I enjoy them, puns don't tend to go over that well. Hmm? <sighs> Both Santa and June lifted their left hands silently. Wait, Santa and June? 
I chose Snake in seven. Well, maybe it's a good thing I normally choose Santa in June, since the game seems to go with that decision regardless. He verified, and she followed suit. 5 plus 2 plus 7 equals 14. The digital root of 14, 1 plus 4, equals 5. This should do it. Now we just need to pull the lever on the side. You guys ready? I'm gonna open it. My body is ready, Junpei. Junpei grabbed the lever and looked back over his shoulder. They stiffened and nodded. Junpei nodded back and set his mouth in a grim line. Then he slowly lowered the lever. It's about to look like an Italian restaurant on the other side of this door. There was a metallic groan, and the door slid open. A breath of air drifted out of it, carrying a stench that nearly made them gag. <coughs> oh, oh, God. It smells like garlic. Junpei grimaced and put a hand over his mouth. Oh my God. Good God. Lotus and Ace shuddered. Seven grunted. Whoa, that's pretty bad. Even Santa's voice shook. He... he blew up. It appeared that Santa was right. The hallway on the other side of the door was splattered with chunks of torn flesh and dark red blood like the toilet of a Wendy's bathroom. The shriek echoed across the room. It had come from June. Then her strength left her and she dropped. As Junpei turned to catch her, the door groaned shut. She crumpled to the floor. Uh, June, uh, uh, are you okay? Junpei dropped to his knees and put his arm around her shoulders. That was when he noticed the tightening in his pants. Her whole body was feverish. She was radiating an intense heat. What the hell? Where'd this fever come from? Uh... June didn't answer. Her face looked like wax, and her whole body began to shake. All right, okay, uh, let's just rest for a minute, okay? Uh, you think you can walk? She nodded weakly. Junpei lifted June to her feet and guided her to a nearby chair. Here we go. As gently as he could, he set her down in it. How are you feeling? Are you all right? She nodded. And as she did, a single, huge tear rolled down the side of her face. Why? Why did this happen? Her voice cracked, broken by misery and grief, and choked by sobs. Why did this happen? Junpei spun around. Do any of you know what the fuck is going on here? Who's Zero? What's this nonary game? Come on! Anybody? Anything? What the hell is going on? What are we doing here? No one spoke. Ace, Snake, Santa, Clover, Seven, and Lotus. They simply stood there. Seven pairs of downcast eyes and seven grim lines for mouths. <laughs> June's body shook with silent sobs. They slowed as the minutes ticked by, and eventually they stopped. Damn. Well, if letting the ninth man orchestrate all of that was really part of Zero's plan, then it appears to have been a pretty simple plan. Just 
kill him and scare the shit out of us. Then suddenly, in the cold, heavy silence that had enveloped them like a thick fog, a bell began to ring. The clock in the central hall. Seven, eight, nine, ten times. And then, on the tenth ring, it stopped. The sound of the bell faded away into silence. It's ten o'clock, then. So that means we've already wasted one hour. An entertaining hour in my book. But this is where things slow down a little bit. Everybody is understandably rattled by what we just saw, and reluctant to continue on with this game. But you'd think with a little coaxing, we'd eventually end up embracing the inevitable and moving forward. But in actuality, it takes another pretty large info dump before we're able to convince our more hesitant members, notably Lotus, into proceeding forward in the Ninth Man's ever so bloody footsteps. Ace said what each one of them had been thinking. That means it's been an hour since Zero's little announcement. Seven's deep voice echoed across the room. Fuck! I've had enough of this crap! Santa leapt to his feet, his fists clenched. How long are we gonna pussyfoot around like this? We've only got eight hours until this time limit Zero was going on about is up! Let's get going already! Go! Go! Santa's outburst fell on deaf ears. No one seemed to agree with him. They stared back at him, their eyes blank and their faces tired. Finally, Lotus spoke. No, I refuse. I'm not going to end up like him. Him? You mean the ninth man? Of course, who else? In his mind's eye, Junpei saw the corpse again. Blood. Oh, blood and pieces of flesh. The dark, reddish-black pool of blood. The scattered pieces of flesh. Organs strewn across the floor like the blossoming of a grotesque flower. The explosion that had torn through his body had been powerful. See, now moments like that are more than enough incentive for me to keep playing the game in novel mode. A lot of the word choice is repetitive, and a lot of the imagery relating to the characters' expressions, like saying they had grim lines for mouths, doesn't necessarily pack that much impact. But when we get down into the more horrific, nitty-gritty scenes like this... I think that's where the imagery really starts to succeed in setting a tone. Like, even now in my head, I can see this dude's intestines just radiating all manner of directions from this dude's chest. And I've always felt like it succeeds in conjuring this image in a way that just wouldn't be the same if they'd actually shown it to us. Honestly, I think it would be pretty cartoonish at that point. That's no way for a person to die. The ninth man's neck had been twisted at an odd angle. Junpei suspected the detonation had thrown him against the wall. <laughs> oh, shit. I'm sitting here gushing about the majesty of the ninth man's mutilated corpse, and Junpei hasn't even finished describing the damn thing. Half of his face was crushed, and the other half was covered in blood. Most of his abdomen had been emptied either by the explosion or by gravity. He had landed on his back, and stark white ribs jutted up from his chest, like the legs of some sort of macabre crab. <clears throat> Junpei felt something flip in his stomach. Ah, well, good to know I'm not the only person getting hungry amidst all this excitement. I think he just screwed up. Yeah, I think we all agree on that. Don't take little girls hostage, guys, or you will get blown the fuck up. 
Eyebrows went up, and Santa continued. He probably set off some sort of trap, and that killed him. I'm not gonna screw up like that. I'm getting out of here alive. <laughs> <laughs> You working on your evil laugh over there, Snake? Kind of ill-timed. Eh, personally, I'm more of a <laughs> type of guy myself, but I can respect the craft. Whatever Snake was laughing at, Santa did not find particularly humorous. What's so goddamn funny? Oh, my apologies. You were just, uh, so very confident. I couldn't help myself. What the fuck? I don't know. I'm gonna have to take Snake's side on this one. Honestly, that's the exact kind of hubris that just killed the ninth man, so it's probably best avoided. I think you've mistaken the situation. Huh? The ninth man's death. It had nothing to do with the trap. Or at least, not the sort of trap you imagine it did. Then? He broke one of Zero's rules. That was why he died. Quite simple if you think about it. Huh? You still don't... <sighs> All right. How about you take a moment and think back to what Zero said? Specifically, what did he say about the number of people? He said only three to five people can pass through one numbered door. Right? And after that? You've forgotten the relevant part. What did Zero say? <sighs> Santa furrowed his brow in thought. Junpei thought back. Zero said... ...that everyone who verified had to go. All those who enter must leave, and all who enter must contribute, right? I think it was something like that. Whatever it was, it, it means that groups of less than three or more than five can't go through. That is correct. A gold star for you, Junpei. Oh, sick. You have gold stars with you? Man, my college never hands those out. Snake inclined his head toward Junpei. The ninth man, however, broke that rule. He tried to pass through a numbered door by himself. And now he's been reduced to a PSA about why you don't fuck with Chef Boyardee. That was why he was executed. Then Zero's watching us from somewhere. Making sure we don't break any rules. Oh, I'm not so sure of that. Why not? Because this execution system is entirely automatic. You didn't notice? There's no need for him to monitor us. What do you mean? Snake looked at Seven with what could only be described as pity and sighed. <laughs> Damn, Snake. You're, at worst, a little arrogant and, at best, at least impatient. Very well. I see it must be me who tells you. But judging by that haughty tone, I'm gonna have to go with arrogant. I've waited long enough, I suppose. I had hoped Zero might spare me the trouble, but... That seems increasingly unlikely. He couldn't see them, of course, but perhaps Snake sensed the confusion upon him. When Ace spoke, he gave words to everyone else's thoughts. Do you know something? Well, I know a great many things, but yes. Snake, man, I was just picking on you, but you're kind of making my case for me here. What is it you know? Here. Snake removed a card from the pocket of his jacket. A card? What does it say? See for yourself. With a flourish, he presented it to Ace, who took a close look at it and spoke. Come on now, what's the point of giving me this? Give me that. Santa snatched the card from Ace, but his expression of disgust quickly turned to one of confusion. Huh? The hell is this? Seven tugged it out of Santa's hands. <laughs> I see. The card went from Seven to Lotus, from Lotus to June, 
and finally to Junpei. He looked at it and understood. This is Braille. Ah, okay. I thought you all were just illiterate for a second there. Braille, the written language of the blind. The card was covered with small, embossed bumps. Junpei could recognize it, but he certainly couldn't read it. I certainly can't read Braille either, but I do remember being pretty fixated by it as a kid. Anytime I ran across it on the doors to my elementary school, I always made it a point to run my finger across it, but I never really figured out how somebody could actually differentiate between those little bumps. I'm probably off my mark, but I always assumed it was a real struggle to learn how to interpret it. Sorry guys, I, I can't read this. Here, have it back. Junpei handed the card back to Snake, who nodded at him with a small smirk. Okay, that was fun. What's so important about that card? I found it in my pocket. I can only assume it is a message from Zero. From Zero? A message? Wh what does it say? Suddenly everyone was crowding around Snake, desperate to hear what the message said. Santa especially looked as if he were about to grab hold of Snake and shake the answers from him. Snake raised his hand. Calm down now. No need to panic. You don't need to force me. I'll read it. Junpei swallowed hard and waited for him to start. He was not the only one. Presently, Snake began to read, his voice calm. His fingers glided over the tiny bumps as he spoke. <clears throat> Bracelet number two. Since you are not blessed with sight, I shall bless you and only you with information. So the ninth man gets a knife and Snake gets a rule book. Not gonna lie, one's a more powerful weapon here than the other. It kind of feels like Zero might be playing favorites. That being said, it's certainly generous of Snake to share this little bit of info with us. I shall tell you of the function of the red, of the dead, and of the bracelet. The red is the recognition device. It will verify your number. Beside every number door, you will find a bed. The dead is the deactivation device. It does exactly what it says. Once you have passed through the number door, you must use the dead to stop the detonator in your bracelet. But perhaps you are wondering, what does this detonator detonate? I am afraid this might be something of a surprise. If this was supposed to be a surprise, I'm gonna go out on a limb and say the ninth man ruined it. He went and opened his present a little early, along with most of his abdomen. I have placed a small arm inside of you and people who you are about to meet. You swallowed it while you were unconscious. I have no doubt, by the time you read this note, the bar will have passed your stomach and found it way to your small intestine. In other words, you will be unable to regurgitate it, as it is to do not try. As I mentioned before, the bracelet on your left hand contains a detonator. Think of it as a remote field, or timer, the bar in your body. There is only one condition to call it detonator. That condition is that you enter a numbered door. Once you have done so, the timer will activate, no matter who you may be. You will have 81 seconds, if, after that time, the detonator has not been deactivated. It will send a signal to the bomb in your body, and stop being it to explode. In order to deactivate the detonator, every person who verified their number at the bread must also verify their numbers at the dead. Once all numbers have been verified by the dead, you need only pull the lever on inside, and the countdown will cease. Anyone who does not verify their number at the grid will find themselves unable to verify their number at the dead. 
that is to say, if you can pass the remember door without first verifying your number at the red in 81 seconds, you will be dead. You must also keep in mind that the number of doors will close automatically after 9 seconds have passed. So long as the door is open, the day will not function. You will do well to remember this. Lastly, let's discuss how to remove the bracelets. There are only two ways to do so. One, you escape from this ship. Two, you are hungry, which is zero. In other words, once the bracelet is taken outside the convoy of the ship, or the backside of the world's heartbeat has fallen to zero, it will shut down automatically. There is no other way to remove your bracelet. If you attempt to force it off, or disable the detonator, the bomb within you will immediately explode. This is all the information which I can impart to you. How you choose to use it is for you to decide. If used wisely, you can eliminate those who might be a danger to you. For a time, you would be able to control your fate. I wish you the best of luck. Snake finished reading, and carefully returned the card to his pocket. Snake, I'm glad you shared all of that with us and everything, but how did you imitate Zero's voice like that? Pretty sure he uses something to modulate it. So it's saying... Only those who verify their numbers at the red can pass through the numbered doors. Teams can't add or subtract people after they're scanned in. The Reds, Deads, and Bracelets enforce the rules. They're Judge, Jury, and Executioner. Alright guys, with that little info dump out of the way, I'd say we've reached another good stopping point. I know I've harped on quite a bit about the uh, pacing issues of the early parts of this game, but we're pretty much out of the woods on that now. And it should be a pretty good time going forward. I hope you have a good rest of your day and that the image of the Ninth Man isn't quite as plastered on the walls of your mind as it is on the walls of this ship. I look forward to seeing you all in the next episode, where hopefully Junpei and company have a little more luck escaping this ship. But hey, whatever happens, happens.